if and when the Cowboys make moves, we're about to talk some trade rumors here on the Dallas Cowboys, we will make a video. That is the job. That is the whole point of subscribing to us here at the Cowboys Report. News happens. Boom, we got a video out for you. So don't miss out on any Cowboys news or moves or anything else in between. Hit that sub button right now. You knew trade rumors. Remember, we're going to talk about Hassan Reddick. That was not a surprise thing to anybody watching today's show. They have emerged following the injuries to both Micah Parsons and Tank Lawrence. Both guys going to miss at least two weeks, uh, probably four-plus for Tank Lawrence, and maybe get Micah back after the bye. I have seen across the board some, I don't know, bad game of telephone going on, uh, citing ESPN reports. This is what ESPN specifically wrote of, from Jeremy Fowler on the Cowboys' pass rush need. The Cowboys are looking at external options to pass with Micah Parsons and DeMarcus Lawrence going down, but they will start in-house. As for external candidates, I'm told Hassan Redick of the Jets isn't a viable option via trade due to cost. So to be clear, this is not ESPN putting Redick out there as a target, as a candidate. This is ESPN knows what we all know. Hey, he, that's a name you have to mention because he's out there and not playing. Everyone wants to know what's going on there. And ESPN says, yeah, don't get your hopes up. That's not reporting it's going to happen or anything like that. I saw that. Get, that's not how it works. Do the exact same thing I'm doing right now. Yeah, probably don't get your hopes up. Now, I get why so many of you have interest. And you should. He's a damn good football player. There's two players who have put up at least 11-plus sacks over the past four years. It is in each of the past four years. It is Hassan Reddick and Miles Garrett. That is it. The Eagles, per a rule that I did not know, I don't think many people knew, frankly, they cannot trade for him. NFL bylaws forbid it because they traded uh, him to a different team previously uh, in the same offseason. It's not actually possible. And you need pass rush help. Right now it's Marshawn Nealon, Chauncey Golston, Tyrus Sweet, and I'd assume uh, Carl Lawson gets the call up to the active game day roster. That's not, it's not a good group. Redick instantly becomes your second best pass rusher even when everyone is healthy. That would be a huge addition for Dallas. So that is the type of all-in move you would make if you were actually all-in. But you're not all-in. Not actually, are you? So I've got some in-depth looks at the issues here around a potential trade. Would you trade for him if you were GM Jerry or you've got GM Jerry fired and you took over? Would you trade for him? Pin comment on today's show. Go vote if the ad comes on YouTube. It's Y for yes, N for no. I would not get my hopes up here, as I mentioned previously. I just, I think there's actually several different issues that you're going to run into. Now, when Jeremy Fowler mentions cost, I think he means one of three things, actually. Number one, Reddick is due a $14.25 million base salary. Now, you don't owe all of that. You would owe the pro-rated figure, meaning what whatever's left that hasn't been paid up already, or in this case, not paid up by the Jets since he's forfeited those game checks and base salary stuff. So you'd owe 14 divided by 18 times however many games left. Call it seven or eight, basically. It's doable for a team with plenty of cap space. Now, they might not want to pay him because ability to pay and choosing to pay are two very different things, as we've seen with Derrick Henry. Also, the whole issue in New York is that Hassan Reddick wants a new deal. Now, is he willing to play for the remaining base salary? Maybe. Um, maybe he just wants out of New York now because he's mad at him. That's certainly a possibility. Only way to find out is to call. The other issue is, what are the Jets open to doing with him? They moved a third-round pick for him. And to trade him for a fifth would be a pretty big, hey, we screwed up when that entire regime was already kind of on the hot seat. And they also need him out there. Plus, their GM, Joe Douglas, is not like Stephen Jones. They had issues over the whole Jamal Adams thing because uh, the Jets think the Cowboys leaked it, and they were probably right. So cost could mean the current cost for Hassan Reddick, the trade cost, or the extension cost. All three things that Dallas historically doesn't like doing at the deadline outside of wide receiver. Plus, honestly, guys, should the Cowboys be buyers? Like, I, 
Reddick makes you better. Unquestionably makes you better. Does it make you better enough? Or are you better off keeping your powder dry for next offseason when you can have big-time salary cap space and all your picks available to you? Some other edge targets that have been linked out there. These per Sports Illustrated. Jadeveon Clowney of the Panthers and Aziz Ojolari of the New York Football Giants. I think both are more affordable and also feasible trade targets. We'll get to them here in a second. But first, what do you think the Cowboys will do? Will they trade for a pass rusher? One for yes, zero for no. Let me know in the comments of today's video. Devion Clowney is off to a okay start. Uh, in, now, it's Carolina, and they're bad. You know, they also lost Shaq Thompson to an injury. That defense is decimated. It is gutted. I bet they would love to trade Clowney and get somebody back after he had a bounce back here in Baltimore. Also, not that expensive, so it's a little bit more doable than what it would have been for the uh, for the Hassan Reddick trade idea. Clowney is also from the area. Maybe he wants to stay there. He's burnt some bridges previously. You almost got to vet the player as much as you, you do the person when it comes to that. Another dark horse option here is Aziz Ojolari, who has never been the most productive sack getter over the course of his NFL career. He's done some nice stuff. Uh, funnily enough, has the exact same stat line as Devion Clowney uh, this season. I was kind of blown away and surprised with that. He had four tackles before this past uh, before the past two games. Now has nine tackles of late. Ojolari does. I like a lot of what I've seen out of him. Um, I, I wasn't expecting. I thought he was going to be a little bit better. But as like a sub-pass rusher, he's not the biggest guy, I have some interest there. Now he's the third best pass rusher on the Giants. Maybe they don't want to do an in-division trade. but And yes, I'm kind of scraping the barrel there. It is September. You're trying to find a, a, a March upgrade. It's tough to do. Now, speaking of the defense, you can get the turnover chain from our friends over at Fanatics. It is available, oftentimes on sale, by the way. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Chain. Get your own today. Link will be in the comments section and the description of today's show. Also, back in the trade rumors of DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, Katie Drummond, front of the show. Cowboys Wire suggesting it. And I get why it's suggested. Now, this is being filmed before Monday Night Football, so we'll see how that goes for Tennessee and Hopkins involved there. But the talent is still pretty solid. Not as good as what it's been previously. Now, he did have a bounce back here in Tennessee, had a pretty big target share, stuff that's all valuable. I don't think you're getting, you know, 1,400, 1,500 yard receiver in DeAndre Hopkins anymore. I do think he instantly and easily becomes your number two wide receiver. And if you're adamant about doing guys on comeback routes, and hitch routes, and, and just, you know, not getting creative, Hopkins actually fits that pretty well. You could put him in the Michael Gallup role and utilize Brandon Cooks as more of a vertical threat. Plus, Hopkins can also do some vertical stuff for you and do more creative stuff with Cooks, too. The one big issue here, beyond the fact that Hopkins wanted to be in Dallas previously and Dallas said no and then traded for Brandon Cooks, funnily enough, uh, beyond that, maybe having the best relationship, he's owed around $11.5 million for the remainder of the season. Now, that's... Got some incentive stuff there, so it, it's a little bit of, you know, maybe he hits it, maybe he doesn't. Um, but again, would Dallas pay that? They're cheap. I want you guys to name a player who you want to trade for. Let me know in the comment section of today's show what player do you want to go out and acquire if you ran the Cowboys organization. I fully expect there's lots of Amari Coopers in the comments after I asked that last question. The trade rumors are back, and ESPN has pushed the possibility of a trade, particularly to the Chiefs, even though I don't know about that one because Rasheed Rice is basically a slot is a slot receiver and is utilized like Travis Kelsey is. Cooper's not that guy. I I don't know like if that's actually all that feasible. What has happened on – this is filming this on Monday, obviously. What has happened today on Monday? Spotrack tweeted this out, that the Browns converted Cooper's base salary into a signing bonus. This is accurate. He's owed right now less than a million dollars at the trade deadline, 600K. It is imminently affordable if the Browns, that's imminently is wrong there. Eminently? I think it's eminently. 
He is very much affordable if the Browns chose to trade him. What happened, though, is there was no, like, timing in the tweet of when it happened, even though Spotrack had tweeted out previously. That decision to convert the base salary is not a new move. It is not. They did that in July. They did that around training camp time when Amari was holding out. That, that is not a, a brand new, wow, the Browns are trying to trade him. They ate a bunch of money already. No, it's already been the case. It has been that way for months. It just now has a different angle instead of the Browns saving money for the future and being aggressive and building a roster to win now. And they always do that stuff with their, with their big-time player contracts. Now they're just now it's like, okay, well, now he's cheap to trade for if that were to happen. I think Amari misses Dallas to an extent. I think Dak Prescott misses him too. I don't know if the Cowboys front office would say, you know what, we screwed up by shipping you out for a fifth. Here's a draft pick back. And the Browns, trying to make a playoff run despite being pretty poor as of late, don't have the receivers to get by without Amari Cooper. I am unconvinced they should happen, especially for the Cowboys. But be a free agent after this year. I will, I will push it then for sure.